This episode is brought to you by Red Riding Hood, the manga-inspired take on the classic fairy tale for readers grades K through 2, written by Christina Oxtra. In Red Riding Hood, readers review the classic story in a brand new way, with twists in the story, more diverse characters, and featuring Japanese aesthetics incorporated throughout. Red Riding Hood is part of a series published by Capstone and written by various artists with unique takes on your childhood favorites. Look out for Red Riding Hood, available on Amazon and your local bookstores. Congratulations, Christine, on your first published book. The link is in the show description. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bosch Rush Podcast. I'm your host, the enlightened and excited Eddie B. Joining me is the Gunner Hunter himself, Mr. LeBron Dawkins. How's it going, everybody? Yes, and the party meister that you want to log into. Everybody, welcome Logan. What's up, yo? What's up? How, what's happening, yo? Yes, these two are from our latest uh, podcast, uh, Crossroads, our patient podcast that you guys could check out on Tuesdays. They are such a great group, definitely with Nelly also. They talk all things PlayStation. They they literally fit the boss rush mode because they'll sometimes get off a topic and just have good <laughs> discussions. <laughs> and faster. But uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the show is hosted by Laron, uh Logan and Nelly and sometimes special guests. Uh so do check them out, guys. So uh support them. Subscribe to Boss Rush Podcast on YouTube and check them out on Twitter. Uh, at Boss Rush Games, um, and check them out, and check them out on YouTube. Uh, I think on Thursdays the uh, the recorded version goes, but also check them out on Twitch on Boss Rush Podcast or Boss Rush Games to check them out live. Uh, so how are you guys doing? We have a, I know we got a lot to cover, but how are you guys doing uh, this? Uh- I've been playing catch up from from the uh, from the unplanned holiday, and I say unplanned because uh, I was going I was going on this month that there was no there was no national holiday, so I so <laughs> so my work schedule so I put a whole bunch of work stuff on on for Monday, and then and then basically everybody that I had to do work for was closed, so I had to compact my schedule into Tuesday, and uh, and I've been working I've been working all week. It's been it's been nothing but IT and computer stuff all week. Uh, like wow. I I barely had time to game. Uh, what about you, Loki? Um, I've I'm been on vacation since Wednesday, and so I've been so lucky. My, yeah, I've been sinking my teeth into uh, Avengers and having so much fun with that game, loving every second of it. And then last night or yesterday was really just a good day to to kind of unplug. Didn't do any projects. Didn't even turn on my PlayStation, which I was kind of happy about for one day. Mm-hmm. Uh, just hang out with the family, get to play with my nieces and nephews, and and then go see my sister for a little bit. It was great. Yeah. Yes, and everybody, the snack, uh, snack Tendo ever special extra edition is coming for you from the Mountain Dew Voodoo. Uh, it tastes like Skittles. It's so good. <laughs> uh, like I bought four. I already bought four of them. Uh, and they're just so good. Bring, bring back, good. bring back the the freaking Mountain Dew that was out when um the the Star Wars prequels were out. It was a purple one. It tasted like the freaking shock tarts. Oh, but is it, is it yeah. the uh, is it the black Mountain Dew black? Is it grape? Uh, I don't believe. Uh, well, I know the can was black. I know the can was black for sure. But I, but I don't think they called it Mountain Dew black. It, it has some. It has some. It has some. Some. It has some. Some funky like you know. Voodoo? You know how they, no, 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 it wasn't voltage. No, no. voltage. Oh wait, wait, wait. no, because no. voltage, voltage. Voltage they, is the orange one, I think. Yeah. No, no, no. This no, 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 the, the live wire is the orange one. Voltage is a blue one. Yeah, Mountain Dew Black is the purple one that tastes like grape. Um, like they have grape a, stock carts. There, there was uh, Shark's was, Bite. That was cool. That wasn't it. I'll have to, I'll have to look at discontinued flavors of, of, of Mountain Dew. As a matter of fact, I'm doing it right now. Discontinued Mountain Dew flavors. Because I'm rocking a Code Red right now. I love Code Red so Have you guys much. had the Maui Burst? Yes. yes. Oh, I love that Oh, one. dude, that okay, one's so- phenomenal. Okay, so I'm, this is a mad thing I'm about it. It's only at like Dollar General here in Illinois. It's like the dollar store, and it's only the can one. I'm like, I need a 12 pack of this. It's so good. It's so freaking good. Oh, it's incredibly Mount- underrated. Mountain Dew Pineapple? Who would have ever thought that that works? Pitch Black. That's what it was. Pitch Black, okay. Pitch yeah. Black. 
See that shouldn't that be coming back for Halloween? Maybe it's the it it's the it's the purple one, right? Yeah, it's purple. Yeah. Okay. So they yeah, sell it was up. it was mark it was marketed as a citrus and dark fruit flavor. So they sell. I think they still sell it here in Illinois, and because right up the street, um, at the gas station, they have it. Mm-hmm. Pitch black was the one. Okay, so remember, like two years ago, Mountain Dew was doing a contest of vote for Pitch Black or Baja Blast, and whichever yes. one they yes. did, they were going to yes. keep it in. St- and those mother, can, can I curse on this show? Yes, yes, you can. Those motherfuckers did not pick Baja Blast. <laughs> Baja but, Blast it, is life changing. <laughs> It's the whole reason I go to talk about. You know, you know, I like, I, I do like Baja Blast, but you know, like I, I overdosed on that. Just like when Doritos introduced a uh, Cool Ranch, I overdosed on those mm. so bad that's like, you know, like the only time I think Cool Ranch, the Cool Ranch Doritos flavor tastes good is on the Cool on the Cool Ranch Locos Tacos. Yes, oh. yes, yes. Oh, those those Dorito Loc ah, wow. So so good, but everybody, I know we we're going to. Uh, that's why I said it was a bonus Nintendo, <laughs> uh, because you guys are gonna have to check in Monday for uh, uh Nintendo Power Block, because when we go live, I am doing a taste test for Snack Tendo, so you guys will be able to see me eating <laughs> some bagels wow. and eating some Ritz crackers. And, like I'm going to be tasting stuff for the first time live and giving my reactions. So you want to tune in to that. But everybody, this is episode 62 of the Bus Fresh Podcast. Each and every week we come together to talk about games and everything we love about them with our friends. You can join us live on Saturdays at 1.30pm on twitch.tv slash Games live and be part of the conversation. But if you can't join us live, no big deal. You can head over to youtube.com slash bushrushgays and bushrushgays.com to watch the show on or on your uh, listening on podcast services of choice. We're going to have to rewrite that. Remember to subscribe, follow, rate, and review wherever you consume us. It helps us out with discoverability and check out our family of shows wherever you listen to our podcast or your podcast of choice and everybody we're not going to do uh, a gaming get down this week due to the fact that series microsoft after a leak happened just threw out everything so series x is going to be 499.99 series s which is their digital system is going to be 299.99 both are going to be released on november 10th um the pre-order date for those systems are september 22nd but there is also a payment plan so if you want to do you could do 25 dollars or you could do 35 dollars for two years um and the question that i actually have to you guys and we i'm going to get your thoughts first on what you guys think about the announcements but is the ball in sony's court or does microsoft still need to dribble uh some of their marketing on why series x and series s needs to be in your household um Logan, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, what first? What are your thoughts about the announcement and um, who who got the kind of finish at this time? Um, I think this is a great move by Xbox, and the fact that Microsoft confirmed everything within two or three hours of the initial tweet was a great way to get ahead of it. I mean, leaks happen, and with Microsoft, it's, it seems like it's happening a lot more this year. But like. This is a great thing. Get out there. The the S is a great option. Um, I was talking about it on, on one of Land Party's podcasts today. Of that's this that's that's the console I'm going to buy for Xbox. Like I'm not going to get the X uh, because because I'm obviously going to get the PS5. But I'm I'm going to keep the S because Xbox has so many great things going for it. Um, the problem I think, and this is why I think Sony still has the advantage, is we have no idea what we're going to be playing on um, the Xbox Series S at launch. I mean mm-hmm. Cyberpunk, obviously, but like. They don't have a ton of exclusives hitting the console right away. Meanwhile, we know Ratchet and Clank and Spider-Man and Miles Morales are both coming for PS5. And so there's the advantage I have there. When when I saw the announcement go live this morning about um, Sony having their press conference on Wednesday, it was yes. I was seeing tweets of, okay, the big boys are finally coming to play. Okay, that's cool. But like as great as we think of – like I, I can't say enough great things about Microsoft at this point. I mean – I know it sounds like I'm just a PlayStation fanboy. I actively play my Xbox, though. I've, I've played it, you know, religiously. Um, when it comes to if, if there's news I want to hear and it's news that, that I think is relevant and I care about more, it's yeah, it's obviously Sony. But Xbox has done so many things to at least get me to 
pay attention to their stuff. And I think the Xbox Series S is the perfect move. The price points are better than I thought they were they were going to be. I mean, three hundred bucks for the Series S makes this console more affordable to everybody. I mean, parents are going to pick this console up now for their kids. I would be shocked to see what the X versus uh, S numbers end up being because I think the S is probably going to sell a little bit better than the X. I'm going to hold my thoughts. Laurent. <laughs> oh, no, I kind of want to hear your thoughts. Okay, basically, I'm, 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 in, the same, I'm in the same mode as, uh, as Logan. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's unfortunate that a leak basically forced Microsoft to, uh, to force their hand. You know, I was having some conversations with some friends uh, during, uh, after, right after all this came out. And I was like, man, you know, like, like the ultimate game of chicken, you know, ultimately they, they, uh, Microsoft had to lose that because – Somebody leaked info, but I mean, like that fantastic price of two ninety nine ninety nine for like that base console. I think that kind of puts I think that kind of puts uh, Sony in a position where they may have to they may have to figure something out, you know, because now we know all the prices are out, and and I don't think any, I don't think a lot of people were expecting two ninety nine ninety nine. In all honesty, I don't think a lot of people were. I think people were expecting the base system to be three ninety nine ninety nine, and the and the new and the uh, and the big system to be four ninety nine ninety nine. That's the way I, that's what I think, but. Uh, ultimately, you know, with that with that big of a price gap between the two systems, if anything, Microsoft kind of puts himself in the sweet spot because if you if you just if people just wind up buying the Series S, it still moves hardware for them, you know, uh, because and you know a lot and then it becomes down to like the basically the hardcore gamers are going to get the Series X and everybody else is casual is going to get the Series S. This is a this is a brilliant marketing strategy, you know, honestly, because it puts an Xbox in every system. So, you know, if you're not a PC gamer and you don't have access to Game Pass, you can spend the money and get the Series S, or you can do that, or you can do the Xbox All Access thing, which we're I think we're going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, are yeah. We? Okay. And, and or you can do, yeah. or you can do that, and in and in 18 to 24 months, uh, just upgrade to the Series X, if you choose. Okay. So and, and what and uh. Who do who do you think got the advantage at this point? At Let this me get point, that out of the way. And the only reason uh, and I'm only saying Xbox has the advantage right now is because we have all the news from Xbox and and uh, and I think I shared with you I, I shared with the Boss Rush team earlier that uh, that basically the entire we thought the leaks were done from <laughs> whatever was going on with Microsoft and then someone blew up their spot and and put the le- and put the leak of their entire their entire show they have planned for next week already is already out there so it's like it's like man y'all y'all have a saboteur or something <laughs> so well, right oh, now ahead. i feel like i feel like microsoft has the edge right now because we have all the news we know what's going on we're no longer as consumers we're no longer left in the dark now, right. now, th- now we've seen how Sony Sony is very reactive, and and when Sony reacts, it's always in the gamers' favor. So, mm. so you know, I I guarantee you, they are they probably found out whoever dropped the leaks of the prices, mm. and already gave them a substantial like little little <laughs> little little what you know side check or something like that because now sony is is in this crazy position to where like hey like we we can just undercut microsoft again we were afraid microsoft was going to undercut us which is why we were taking so long oh, and, and let's let's be honest we know this is why microsoft, sony was taking so long they mm-hmm. they 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 knew that microsoft was trying to wait them out because uh to to undercut the price because everybody already knows the series x is already ready to to, to yeah. ship they already know that it's just like uh, and um and I think the um, I think the conjecture from tech from tech insiders was that Sony is sixty percent ready right now for their launch, uh, whereas Microsoft is ready to go. Well, well okay. So when I uh, we're talking about the all access pass, my thing about it is I don't think you need it for the Series S. For Series X, I believe so. That would work better because the thing about it is is that. With Series S, anyone who has a physical like me, I can't do Series S because I have a big collection that I have um, um, invested in with Microsoft. So I have about sixty plus some games physically for Microsoft. Same thing that I have with PlayStation that I have to get the physical because I have sixty plus some games for that system. And so three hundred dollars should be at this time be able to. Uh, save up for it to get an S if you need it. Now, if you are getting Game Pass for S, that's literally fine. But if you're going to be spending that sixty to seventy dollars to get new games, there's no need. I would say wait. 
build up that sixty seventy dollars and then get the S so you can start buying those new games instead of just instead of trying to do a payment plan and then actually by time you could have paid the system off you already probably got about four or five games on the system because. S is not backwards compatible. So unless you're going and depending on definitely how GameStop is closing stores, (laughs) (laughs) if you have have a lot of physical games, you better find out on how to get rid of them. Because if you don't, you're going to be stuck with all of these games that you can't play on the system. If you don't plan on getting the 500, you also got to make sure that your TV is ready to get the benefit of what Microsoft is showing. And definitely even with Sony, you you got to be ready for a 4K. You got to be ready to, you know, do the 120 frames and everything like that. Because I I think right now, the 60 frames, 120 stuff, it's just marketing talk until we actually see it. Those won't come in until next year. Yeah. I think we'll, if we get 120, that's for uh, that's for Ori in the Blind Forest and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. We're not going to get 120 in Cyberpunk. You could get that on PC, but you're not going to get that on X Series X. Mm-hmm. There is no way that you're going to get up to 120 without it having frame problems and stuff. Yeah. Definitely with Control. Control is a technical mess. Yeah. And if you try to get that thing to 60 frames per second, I want to see what happens after you get out, out the pause menu and that thing stops freezing. <laughs> you out the pause menu. <laughs> you, you, you're going you're gonna to start your Xbox Series X and it's just going to sound like the PS4 Pro. It's just going to take off like the jet engine that it is. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think for like definitely for me, because with my job, I get paid three times in October. So I'll have 500 already set, 500 plus tax already set aside to get Series uh, X. Our controllers that we have for Xbox Ones already work with that system. Oh, so yeah, that's I'm, seven I'm, on. I am, I am so happy about that. <sighs> yes, that saves on. Uh, that says on accessories. You can't really do it with PlayStation mm. Five, but with the announcement, like you talked about, low game or September sixteenth, if they said, "Hey, you can't connect your PlayStation Four with PlayStation Five, uh, to use for the games if you want to," bam, I, that's I all, th- that's literally awesome if they decide to do that too. But I don't think they are because they are putting so much of an emphasis on this marketing campaign about yes. the dual sense. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the dual sense is the new way. Like, there's so many cool things. I, another thing that like went low key untalked about this week that Xbox mm-hmm. announced, I think it's actually the coolest thing that they did, was so PlayStation's been pushing this 360 audio, right? And that's what yes. our headsets are going to be built around. But then Microsoft one upped it and said, hey, Dolby Atmos, that's on the X and the S. Dolby Atmos is absolutely incredible. Like my iPod uh, Pros, my my uh, AirPod Pros uh-huh. are going to be. Um, they have Atmos coming to them here in a few weeks. But if you've ever sat in an Atmos theater, for instance, that's 365 different channels, different pinpoints of audio that can come at you at any given second. That is mm-hmm. such a cool thing, and I love it. This is a huge emphasis, and Microsoft just stole the biggest advantage in that level field, just right off PlayStation. But like PlayStation. I they're gonna come out and they're gonna say, hey, look, I, I'm gonna I'm I, I'm changing my price up. I think I think 450 is what they're gonna try to go for. <laughs> you know, that I'm, I'm gonna say too. I, I'm exactly. I'm gonna say this because I was thinking of uh when when me and you was talking, LeBron. I was like uh 449 for the physical, 249 for the. I was thinking uh. Correct. Yes. For some reason, I was thinking three hundred for some like, wrong and, price. And but you know, and you, for know and you know, what's crazy though? If Sony, if Sony comes out with a two forty nine ninety nine price tag for their base system, that's going to cause Nintendo to you know shift it. their prices. That's going to cause Nintendo to shift their prices because the because the Switch has been wait, did the Switch launch at th- at, at two ninety nine hundred? Yeah, three ninety nine. Okay, yeah, I, 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 I thought at one point it was like three forty nine or something like that. Okay, so the Switch yeah, has always been. No, no, no. Yeah, it's always been three hundred, hasn't it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but this, but this, but this would actually make have to force Nintendo's hand because Nintendo has been coasting. As a matter of fact, Nintendo has basically first party their their console the way they first party their games. Their games are always sixty bucks and never drops. I mean, uh, wait, is it sixty now? Yeah, universally sixty dollars, and they never and they never drop. They never drop. And then you know you're like me, you're like me, and want to commit harakiri when you find out like a really good game that was first party you drop. You know they lost their minds and dropped it down to thirty two dollars, and, and 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 it was a flash sale for like two days. Right. And it's like, yeah, so so you know. Th- 
so that, Laurent, those price points, man. <laughs> so, so Laurent, me and Corey was talking in, in, in Celeste. We was talking on Power Block. Uh, we were talking about Switch Pro and everything, and we think that the price drop is going to happen. Like if they price drop light and they price drop um, the regular Switch, like I the think light, well, the light won't get price dropped. The light, the reason why the light won't get price drop is because it's too new and they're still trying to, you know, they're still trying to make mm -hmm. up for the gap. You know, every every company has a has a has a monetary gap when their consoles release. But we, well, do you, it's Nintendo. Like you were talking about the mini skews of the 3DS. <laughs> I think that Switch Light XL is going to happen. So. <laughs> They'll drop the original one to like one seventy nine or something, and 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 make the new price do point need, for do Switch Lite. Do we need an XL to Switch Lite? Do we? We really need? don't. We this really don't. Really <laughs> we really don't. This is literally Nintendo because we me and Corey yes. were just like True. me and Corey, we, we was talking about Switch Pro go, taking over the three hundred price point with the bigger screen, the new controllers, and all of that stuff, and then they drop down uh, like for one ninety nine the regular Switch. So once it gets out of stock. That's itch. Now you got XL for light, and now you got Pro, and they're going to go on probably for two or three more years before their next system comes on. We were saying from Nintendo's perspective, because that's what they kind of like to do. Oh, go ahead, Logan. Well, that's what I was, well, I was thinking. Like, okay, what if the Switch Pro came out at three fifty, and like say that that's that's the area they feel comfortable there. Then your regular Switch goes down to two fifty, mm -hmm. and then you could do the Switch Lite at one seventy five, and yeah. then. Everybody has it, at some point. There's a price point where you can afford all three consoles. Really? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. For six hundred bucks, you could effectively have a Switch Lite. You could have maybe the base model PS PS5, and then maybe the base model Xbox Series mm -hmm. S. Yeah, that's and, not bad at all. And, and and jump back on the the three D three D audio that you was talking about, Logan. Uh, I'll probably froze. Um, the three D audio that you was talking about, Logan. Uh, Sony is about sound there are they to me personally i don't trust microsoft with their sound i trust more sony because because Ooh. i have always I, and, and i'm gonna say this fired and i'm, and I'm gonna say this i don't yeah, yeah. reason because sony is a sound company they they have been one of the best companies that deals with sound in my personal opinion if i do any kind of sound thing i do sony because i get crystal clear stuff and i guess i will pay that money for it but i trust that their quality will last longer than anybody else's but I think, i'm not but, but i think xbox realizes that and that's why they formed a partnership with atmos i mean yes, mm -hmm. yes. you look across the board atmos is just tested off the charts really well amc has got one of the most lucrative partnerships with dolby um, out there and and i think the cool thing about that too is that it allows for xbox which has these big cinematic moments you know as you play through halo yes you want that big huge audio and that's exactly what atmos does i i think xbox is going to be better off on the audio system than we realize i think they might even be better than sony on that and again this is coming from the biggest sony fanboy in boss rush like I, I mean, Xbox is going to beat us at that. I, I have no doubt about that. I, I, w I would love, I would love to see a YouTube channel dedicate to sound, hearing between games, and that's mostly like third party games and stuff, and be like. Just like, okay, if you play this through Sony's 3D audio, this is what you hear. And let them give the review in their opinion. This is what you hear from uh, 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 Atmos. Because my thing, because my thing, hearing Gears on Microsoft, like hearing Gears 5 now through a headset is bunkers good. But same thing by hearing like the hearing like god of war it's just like this is crazy good too so the sound engineering is going to be on point for either system but it's going to be i think it's going to depend on the hardware that you're using That's like true. like the accessories like the headphones and stuff yeah. and and i like i said i trust sony sony more because i have to use more of their products over microsoft i'm not knocking microsoft with the with the sound thing but I I I got to because like a separate like my thing is this Forza set Forza Seven or Forza Horizon Five if they got a banging soundtrack I need to hear that as the best <laughs> audio that it, it, that it needs to be Horizon Zero Dawn I want to hear everything crystal clear like ridiculously <laughs> good Horizon Two I said on PS Five oh man whatever Breath of the Wild do whatever Nintendo wants to do with their sound, <laughs> they can do whatever and let them be that. But, like, I, Nintendo's I, just gonna ship you a little crappy pair of headphones like this to be like, Hey, this is our version of Atmos. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> run into the Nintendo app to use it. <laughs> yes, I could not oh, actually talk to anybody when you play online, <laughs> but. 
Yeah, I I think right now, like I would say it's is Sony's court. I think Microsoft still has a little bit more to do. Um, but it's going to be exciting. I think it's going to be a great holiday. Um, but we just gotta play everything literally by ear. Um, and it depends on what games that everybody is planning to get. I, I know for Xbox, me and, and me and Jesse are doing the medium for PlayStation 5. We'll probably be doing I'll be doing Ratchet and Clank. I really, I really want Resident Evil 8 and I really want Horizon. Kimma Kenna got moved to next year, so I could wait for that. But like if they come up with some strong indies and third party for PlayStation 5, I think they'll still have have it on like nintendo has already got my money i already pre-ordered super mario 3d world i'm already getting pikmin 3 deluxe i'm already planning on getting uh hybrid warrior um a shout out to boss man cory he t- we've been talking about a breath of the wild trilogy and if he said if actual breath of the wild 3 don't happen we already have our trilogy because that age of calamity trailer was like uh well series x series what um what about microsoft and i just i i literally just gagged and now, and uh, the gay self, uh, the gay version of my bisexual he came out. It was just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that that's going to be our little discussion. There's going to be more talk about it on Arsenal X. So, guys, do check it out uh, on Sunday. Um, but we have the Ubisoft forward to the next game presentation because <laughs> Prince of Persia says the time. Mm-hmm. Remake or retake? <laughs> and retake. Immortals, <laughs> Immortals Phoenix. That game looks a hot mess. I'm sorry. Immortals <laughs> Phoenix Rising, aka Kid Icarus Ossity, uh, Watch Dogs Legion with uh, Aiden That's Pierce hard. and right way too long. Uh, the, uh, yeah, I don't know about this Ubisoft presentation. <laughs> Any thoughts, y'all? <laughs> Because, yes, Immortals look good, but then play that James Bond funk thing. I'm like, wait a minute, what? Is th-? I'm like, you can't do the same thing that you use for Watch Dog Legions and then do the same thing close to a game that's in Greek mythology. Like, yeah. that doesn't work. Uh, but uh, thoughts about Ubisoft 4. <laughs> All right. Well, um, let me go. Let me go. Let me go first because uh, this would be really easy. I didn't catch a whole lot of it actually. I, I, like I was bogged down with a whole bunch of work stuff. So, uh, so a lot of the a lot of the stuff. If I didn't catch it in my feed, if I if I didn't catch it in my feed, I wasn't able to actually like tune into a lot of it. So the only thing I really saw was uh, the Prince of Persia Santa Time remake, and that's what they're calling a remake right now. Uh, and uh, I will just say, based off of what I saw, like even though it got me hype. Uh, because Santa Time was one of my favorite games. As a matter of fact, it was my very first Prince of Persia game, very first my one. My and, I, and it's crazy because that game that game has a legacy that goes all the way back to the Commodore sixty four. Lebron, okay, this is the crazy thing. Didn't we? Now that I'm thinking about it, doesn't Santa Time remind you of Batman Arkham uh, Asylum? Oh, the way that yeah. you run yes, up yes, it just, does. I literally I, it popped in my mind. I was just like. Wait a minute! This is where this came from. I forgot all about it. You know I played, yeah, I'm gl- I'm glad you mentioned that. That puts a whole new spin on it. You know, um, uh, so what I will say is, like I said, like the the trailer got me got me hyped, and uh, and we've been rumor milling that we've been rumor controlled that on our very first uh, uh, Crossroads podcast. Mm-hmm. We rumor controlled that oh. one because we were like we we're like hold on, and but but. But uh, but the reason why we but the reason why we didn't debunk the rumor was because like the source at the time was like really trusting the games industry. So we're like, hey, who was yeah. the, who was the source again? I forget J- the name. Uh, it was uh, Jason Schreier. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Usually when usually Schreier is like a uh, Schreier is like Ben Stein in, in the fight. It, it, it finances Ben Stein. Like when he talks, <laughs> like when he talks money, you need to listen. So yes. when Schreier so when Schreier is talking game industry, like you may want to like sit back and like yeah. s- and see what he's doing. So uh, so so. With the uh, Prince of Persia remake, like I said, I enjoyed it. But the main thing, I was like, man, is it me? Or does it seem like they just, like, upscaled footage from the original game? Like, are they even remaking this or what? But but that might be because Ubis- Ubisoft has learned. Ubisoft has learned about over, like, over... Like overdoing their their franchises when they're announcing them, like because who because remember the E three uh, freaking uh, the reveal of uh of Watch Dogs? Yes, th- th- that game. You know what that game? 
I will say one thing about Watch Dogs. That game actually helped both Microsoft and Sony sell systems because it looks so next gen that everybody was like, "Oh, I gotta get, oh, I gotta get the console." And then the funny thing is, Mario Kart destroyed it the month after. <laughs> like it, it ran a train on Watch Dogs. I'm sorry. Oh, and everybody, ask. Excuse me. Prince of Persia is not garbage. It has questionable content right now. <laughs> <laughs> Westenable content. There's, there's that, there's that, that phrase. But, uh, but yeah. Ult- uh, honestly, um, right now I'm favoring the Prince of Persia remake. The only problem is, is that, is like y'all need to do more work, baby. Y'all, I mean, I mean, y'all can't remaster this, and it looks, and basically it looks like glorified PS3 and Xbox 360 graphics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ubisoft, we're Ubisoft. We are, we are literally three console generations. By the time Prince of Persia comes out, we'd be three. PS2, okay, so PS3, PS4, we'll be in PS5. We'll be literally three console generations away from where this game is at. You do not reskin us a PS2 game and think that we're going to spend like the whole full dollar value for it. Mm-hmm. Especially, especially when it seems like right now they didn't announce a lot for it, but right now it seems like it's just going to be the game. There's not going to be any new content. There's not going to be any yeah. changes to the battle mechanics. There's not going to nope. be. There's not going to be additional lore. You know, uh, because and technically there should, really shouldn't be a lot of additional lore because if the game does well for them, like they have the green light to uh, to do like the uh, to do like the two sequels. They have the oh, green warrior, light. Uh, warrior Within and whatever was the second one Warrior Within because that was yeah, the one that was, was the one that disappointed me so bad. Yeah, because dis- they they decided to go to dark point. with that one. Well, no, no, it wasn't even that. Like the, the, the game was, just, they just did a bad job. They just did a bad job uh, developing it. Because the one thing I remember for sure is like all the audio was all, uh, out of sync. Uh, I yeah, I still because I have Prince of Persia, I have since the, I have since the time for GameCube and then Warriors with it and then that third one on Xbox. Mm. I had. Um, yeah, so that's about the that's about the most I can give you about my take on the uh, on the on the, uh, on the Ubisoft event because the only thing I saw was Prince of Persia. Honestly, I didn't see much else. Like I like I mean like I'm on Twitter all the time. I didn't see a lot of people like hyping or tweaking or doing anything else. And um, I remember seeing the conversation uh, that everybody was talking about, where like where like um where who was the developer? He got cut off, and he was the one that was highlighting the whole thing. Uh, Yevs or Vez, uh, who's the yeah. CEO? Yeah, yeah, CEO. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said developer. Oh, you miss? Oh, uh, what about you, Logan? Three of the five things that they talked about, I'm totally in for. I totally love. I think it's great. Um, you know, you you kick off with Immortals Phoenix Rising. Okay, I'm not mm-hmm. a huge fan of the new name. Um, it looks like Breath of the Wild. Um, so. <laughs> But but it looks like seeing the gameplay in the post show is like okay this this game could be really freaking good. Mm. Uh, I wasn't impressed by Prince of Persia. I thought that was just it, it looked like a little bit better lighting. And I'm sorry, mm-hmm. lighting doesn't constitute a whole remake. Mm-hmm. If this game is anything over forty dollars, it won't sell. Oh yeah, that's that's just that's just yeah. how I'm feeling right now. Uh, you got Scott Pilgrim in there. I freaking love that. I thought that was a really cool. Uh, Wait, wait for that game to come back and come back to the PS4. I thought that was cool. Go ahead. I can tell no, you uh, I no, because I still have it on my PS3 and right. I never got a chance to beat in that game. Um, Castle Crashers took all my time away from that. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad that they announced Scott Pilgrim because I'm gonna buy it on Switch. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll probably buy it on Xbox. No, me, no, me. I'll probably buy it on all three systems to make sure <laughs> I cover my base. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, games like that, games like that I always have a home on the Switch as far as yeah. I'm concerned because like I'm guaranteed to buy that retro y like stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Watch Dogs Legion, if anything, this conference heard it. In my opinion, um, you showed us the same footage we've seen now three times. Um, the addition of the Stormzy, that's cool. Um, I thought that was kind of a cool touch, but like that part of the conference went on way too long, especially when the tweet comes out saying, hey, we were really pressed for time. So we had to cut the statement about how we really messed up as a company. We had to cut that out of this conference to what, make room for Watch Dogs Legion? I mean, you could have easily taken that out yeah. and left that off. You know, it's classic. It's classic Ubisoft, though. Like when Ubisoft, when Ubisoft thinks they have like the the, the goose that lays the golden egg, they run it to death, even if it's something we've seen like seventeen trillion times previously. It was, yeah, you know, it's the same. It's the same stuff. So it's, a lot of times, I mean, uh, what was another game? 
Uh, I'll give them credit though; they haven't they haven't run that Beyond Good and Evil into the ground. Like I think I've only seen it know, once. We don't even know what that game is. It is. Yeah, yeah. I, and it's crazy because uh, they announced they announced that a movie's coming out, and now everybody's like, okay, which one will come out first, the movie or the game? <laughs> I'm, I'm so I'm just confused with Beyond Good and Evil Two. Is this supposed to be a prequel to the first game, or is this going to be a side? Like, what are they doing? Like this whole thing, whole message about that game is a jumble mess. I thought, it, I thought it, we were going to get something. And what I would have preferred Ubisoft do is they were smart to leave Valhalla office. Because I think if you push Valhalla again, like that's mm-hmm. even more than we mm-hmm. needed. If they had left Watch Dogs off, you could have given us an update on, hey, one, what the heck is Skull and Bones doing? Because we haven't heard about that game in about They years. restarted yes. that whole production. That, that oh, yeah, whole I did game. Hear, I, I did but, hear, but like, I did come hear, like, yeah. get the creative director on camera for like three minutes saying, hey, we've heard your feedback from the alpha test we were a part of and it didn't go well. So, so he, I think he or someone at Ubisoft made a tweet about that and said that we restarted the whole project over. Ubi, uh, Skull of Balls is something completely different than what you guys expect. It's been delayed, so please just give us time to work on it. And they did a tweet about it. I'm like, and I just happened to see it because somebody retweeted it. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. And then they could have gotten, like, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who's working with Hit Record, they could have gotten him on screen to talk about uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 of saying, hey, submit your, um, uh, like, hey, we need voice actors for this section, or we need this, we need that. Plug Hit Record, do all that, show off your partnership, that works a little bit better. But then Ubisoft... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, finish finish your statement. Ubisoft finished so freaking strong, though. Because they showcased a game that I, I knew was in development, but we didn't know exactly what it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Rough Riders is freaking a genius way to close this thing out. Um, it's steep but in the spring and summertime, and so you've got uh, bicycles, you got Moto X, and then you still have snowboarding, you still have skiing, and it's this big open world. You just, I was so freaking impressed with Rough Riders. I was like, this is the Ubisoft I love. Because so I beta tested, um, or I tested um, steep for about two years before it got to release. And so seeing how far Ubisoft has taken that kind of concept of this open world, create your own trails, create your own tricks, do your own runs, be creative with it. Seeing that now in a summer and springtime game is going to be just an absolute blast. I cannot wait for that game. Yeah, I... So, yeah, it's... I think that this one could have been better. Like, I... I, I got to go to the list of all the E3 conference because I think this one would be the last one um, before Tokyo Game Show. Uh, I know that's completely something completely different. I'm going to be watching that while I'm on vacation, um, giving my impressions about that. Um, but yeah, this Ubisoft one, they literally just, I don't know. It, it, was, oh, it was good for what it is, but I'm just like, y'all got beaten by Microsoft first. Uh, showcase when everybody didn't like you. <laughs> so I, I we're going to move forward because <laughs> because moving, moving forward on Ubi forward. <laughs> yes, because goodness gracious, five hundred five games number is up. They can only do upgrades, but they but they control it. So what I mean by that, everybody is um some PlayStation Four owners uh who own the original version of Control digitally um kind of got upgraded to the Ultimate Edition after 505 Games said they couldn't do it. And, but 505 Games found, found out and they took it all back. And now they're kind of quiet and now people are upset and mad at 505 Games and now they are saying that they are completely greedy um, for putting out this Ultimate Collection and saying that's the only version, that that's the only way that you could upgrade to Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. I and Someone said that well, Remedy Games should not work with 505 Games. And at this point in time, Remedy, Remedy's in a position where they need a publisher. They can't do anything by themselves anymore. Like, they can't publish their own games. They, they could try and make their own games, but I... I don't. I really think they're a they just a company that they they always going to be having to rely on somebody to get their games out. And I think this five or five game deal was bad. So uh, what is so so remedy? If Sony comes with an offer, you better take, take it. it. 
Take it. Better take it. Just take the money. We okay. Were talk- we were talking about that last week. Uh, can on, I, on, on Crossroads. Yeah. Can I tell you a funny thing, uh, LeBron? I think they need to get with Nintendo and let Remedy do Eternal Darkness too. And the oh, only, yeah? re- and the only reason why, and the only reason why, because I think Nintendo will help Remedy make their games better. In a sense, I think Nintendo will go in and really QA a lot of that stuff that they design. Because for some unknown reason, Remedy games feel like they're never quality controlled or quality assisted. Maybe. Maybe Quantum Break is uh, Quantum Break is probably an exception. Everything else that they have made, I think Nintendo would just be like, "Look, we got we like love what you guys are going for and doing. Let's make this better because we want to make sure that when we release this project and you're releasing the Nintendo project with our money, you about to give them the best quality yeah. ever." You That's know fair. what? You know what? I, I I like that logic actually. I I do. Um, but but for some strange reason, I feel like I feel like uh. Uh, they would, they would have better control over their own <laughs> over their own yes. stuff if they if if, uh, if if Sony makes them an offer. Oh yes, <laughs> if, if if they want to do the Remedy verse with Sony, go right ahead. I would be there day one to buy. It. But like, if they're gonna do a project, right. they need some money. Go with Nintendo. I would, I would go for I'm it, gonna, Logan. I'm gonna sound yeah. like a jerk saying this. I'm gonna really sound. Like, uh, don't hate me. I, I think Nintendo holds Remedy back. From a technical, from a technolo- technologically, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, technological yeah. standpoint, Remedy or Nintendo holds them back. When you can create the graphics that you can for both either Microsoft or Sony, mm-hmm. and you have the different advances with the audio system and all that cool stuff, I think Remedy likes the look and the aesthetics of their games and like how it is kind of this amazing special effect phenomenal that they mm-hmm. create. I think. If you're looking at your future and saying these are the these are the uh, artists and illustrators that we bring into our company and we want to be able to showcase their work in the best way, I think you do that on Sony and specifically on Microsoft. And and yeah. I and I and I agree for their projects. The thing about it is is that their projects sometimes have a lot of quality problems. And even though even though you got the even though you look at everything is great, if you still are having technical problems. That ruins the quality, in a sense. And I'm not not and I'm saying not saying that Remedy isn't isn't Control looks beautiful. Oh yeah, that, absolutely. When they, before the game came out, I was just like, I want that. Like I was literally ready to get Control on PlayStation with the Queen. If they if they would have dropped Control only for a PlayStation as an exclusive, I would have been straight buying it then and there. But like, look at Gorilla. Like, Gorilla was having issues with Killzone left and right, and then when oh, they yeah. said, "Screw it, we're gonna redo who we are," and then come out with Horizon. And yeah. Horizon, I get it; it doesn't have an online uh, aspect to it, so it's a little bit easier to not have the bugs. Horizon just reset them, and it was because Sony was helping look over their shoulder a little mm-hmm. bit and creating that mm-hmm. partnership. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I will okay, say, um, um, uh, I, I just want, I just want to circle back real fast about about Nintendo and Remedy. Uh, you kind of. You kind of uh, you kind of set this up yourself when you said how like control just had uh, had so many like technological problems and stuff like that and um, and and uh, I agree with Logan like basically if Remedy does wind up you know becoming a third party studio exclusively for for Nintendo they're looking at situations where they would have to uh, it sounds bad to say dumb down their tech you right. know but. But you know, but you know, with Nintendo's QA uh, practice and stuff like that, you know, like this is the reason why certain games, like this is the reason why certain games, just have wind up looking a certain way or having a certain mm-hmm. feel when it comes to Switch. You know, uh, I, I, I mean, I applaud like games that have come to Switch that we thought would not become the Switch, like The Witcher, and you know, oh, like, yeah, games like, yeah. Uh, Alien Isolation, uh, you know, stuff like that, and, and Burnout Paradise. Like I almost, I almost spent money on Burnout Paradise <laughs> again on the Switch, Did but I, I was like, it? no, I didn't buy it yet. I need to. Uh, but but, uh, but I was like uh, I was like you know what I I would wind up playing it more in handheld mode than docked mode and okay. so I, that that kind of threw it all all off of me. But okay, back to you, Ed. <laughs> oh oh, and I would and I was I was saying more of working on a Nintendo property with Remedy. What whatever Remedy wants to make, that's why I said go with Sony or right. Microsoft, go with someone big, but work with Nintendo to because this is the platinum. This is the platinum thing about it. Plat- I always use this. Uh, some people might find an excuse. Platinum literally didn't get their reckoning recognition until Bayonetta two. And even though Nintendo let uh, Platinum do their own thing, 
you know Nintendo came in and be like, no, you need to fix this. You did some ideas. Okay, bro, leave and you let you guys go. And Bayonetta 2 got platinum the recognition where Activision and everybody else who wants to work with them got that got, got these great platinum games. Well, some of them. Because uh, um, the the Corey game and the Ninja Turtle game, no. I, but that, I, I feel like I need to I feel like I need to have an argument on that one because uh because I because here's my thing. Platinum games already had their recognition out there. These are yeah. these are these are these are guys who came from defunct Capcom studios like Clover yes. Studios, stuff like that. You know, um, you know, they had their recognition and, and trust me, like like they did like the original like the first runs of games they did, like Bayonetta and some of those yeah. other games, man, like they were already on the map. If anything, if anything, Nintendo just gave them the opportunity to finish some of the stuff that they wanted to do, which is why we got Bayonetta 2. Bayonetta 2, Bayonetta 2 helped move a bunch of Switch systems because that was the first game I bought when I bought my Switch brand new. That was the first game, I, you know, and I already had Bayonetta, so it wasn't even like I needed Bayonetta. I needed Bayonetta just, you know, mm-hmm. just to have Bayonetta 2 for a Switch. But um, but the thing, the thing I think. And we talked about this on the very first bo- uh, Crossroads uh, podcast. Was that was that what's going to what's probably going to happen is like we're going to see Nintendo lose some of that chokehold it has on on Platinum's properties, which is why like Bayonetta three will probably come out on the Switch, but then we're going to see Bayonetta two finally show up on other consoles and the PC. And and uh, and, 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 can I, and and that and that's whatever contract because I think right now I think Nintendo's linear with contracts. Oh yeah, well, hey, just, hey, hey, just good for Nintendo them. third Nintendo third party contracts are a weird one because it's like there's not a huge like it's not lucrative to to go directly to the Switch right like it's cool it to come not. to it later it's better to come to PC Xbox or, or or Sony first and then come to the Switch like yeah like The Witcher like all these and, other games are and, done and this and this is the thing about it. You just said Nintendo third, like well, second party kind of third party kind of thing. You see that Nintendo only exclusively work more with Japanese developers than That's America. True. That's true. That's and true. And only and the only American company because they own retro studios. They're the only ones that use besides uh, Cadence of Hyrule um, and whoever made Good Job. That uh, and Ubisoft. Well, Ubisoft is Europe, but that's more third party because um, they make their own games. They I have the reason- not. I they think have the reason not, why. Oh, okay. good. No, no, no. Finish. Finish. I'm oh, sorry. No, they they haven't got went to Bioware. They haven't went to um, uh, CD Projekt Red. They haven't went to no American studios in this month. In fact, we already know that they've been using with Japanese developers because of what they did with Nelco for Soul Calibur 2. What they did with um, uh, Tecmo, uh, uh, Tecmo. Um, oh, with uh with Tekken tag tournament, how you got that big character with looking like Lu- uh Waluigi and stuff like <laughs> like they have been me. using like they have more of a good partnership with Nelco than anybody else. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll say I, no. You're on to something though because like they do they do work better with with Japanese third parties, but that's also because like we gotta look, man. Like like Nintendo kind of hurt themselves with third party uh, third party studios worldwide, uh, starting with the starting with the Wii. They yeah. hurt, and the Wii U didn't didn't fix anything. Like a lot, like a lot of studios now that we see third party that are not Japanese companies, they're ones taking a chance. This is why this is why we saw like CD Projekt Red titles show up. This is why we saw Alien Isolation show up. You know, uh, you know, this is why we're seeing a little bit more and a little bit more. Like, like the, I'm pretty sure the next, bu- the next, I guarantee you, the next Bioware game, which is probably going to be Dragon Age Four, will show up yeah. on the Switch. We'll show up on the Switch. And and, and this is. Uh, not I, I kind of want to counter a uh, counter argument that will yeah. quickly run. And yeah. the only reason why the only reason why it was is because yes, third party wasn't working with, with Nintendo because third party studios was closing left and right during the PlayStation yeah. Three and 360, 360. If they didn't sell a certain million kind of sales, that studio was closed. And well, and, well, that's it, because it, that's it, because that's because us as consumers, we we allowed EA, Activision, and other companies to dictate yes. to yeah. dictate what type of games that we felt need to be delivered to us that's 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 a fault on us like we like we're crying now in 2020 about how like all these awesome studios are gone like because i mean i mean i mean hell like i want dead space 4 but we yes but 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 we somehow allowed ea to figure to think that to think that a certain type of game is all we wanted and that's on us the gamers you know so we have to take responsibility when these when these when these developers close because i mean like you know like i said clover studio that was okami yes 
and, 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 and feed a fun show. Yes. But like, or go ahead. But, oh, oh no, no, ahead. I was, I was, I was actually finished. Because <laughs> like, I, you know, I think, I think you got a great point there, Laurent. You know, back, back at the PS3 P at Xbox 360 day, that was when Sony and Microsoft were both thinking, what if we assemble a, a team together mm-hmm. and we buy all these other studios? And that was when you started to see bigger and bigger things happen. But like, right now we're in a cool place where like. At least once every four or five months, there's a huge game that comes from an indie. Oh, Fall really? Guys is a perfect example of yes. that. Um, last year, Concrete Genie, coming from Pixelopolis, nobody saw that game being good. It comes out, it, it, it smashes. Dude, Concrete Genie is crazy good. It's so freaking good. Like For a story-driven game with just absolutely insane visuals, Pixelopolis picked out... Hey, how can we make this game attractive? And they just built one of the best games of last right? year. There's yes, a reason it real. went on yes. my top 10 exclusives for PS4 list because I was like, this game wasn't given a chance by many. And and then when you play it and you hear the heart behind this game and how Pixel Opus came up with this idea and, and how they wanted to portray it, like these indie developers that can make a name for themselves, mm-hmm. who can get to the point where Sony's like, or Sony, Microsoft, whoever it is, is like, yeah, we want you to be a part of our team. That's great. I, you're going to see more of like, look at it like the NBA. You're going to see these super teams get formed between Xbox and Sony. Right now, I think that's kind of the race that we're in is Xbox is buying up like, what feels like a studio every two or three months right now. Mm-hmm. And Sony's out there with like one big name every six months, which is awesome. But they're building these huge teams that like on the PS5 and Xbox, like, so many people were saying, you know, when, when we were in that waiting period between when we knew uh, or when we were waiting for news to come out for the Xbox uh, series X and and Mm -hmm. PS five was like, Oh, the console war is dead. No, I don't think it's, I think it's never been more alive because now they're in just a pissing match for the exclusive. Mm -hmm. They want you to play together. Yes. But like, they also want you to have the game that you're only going to be able to play there. Yeah. And I think, I I think it's, Oh, Oh, uh, I think that's why when, it comes to first party. I, I don't call them first party exclusives. I, I just call them first party titles because if they show up on PC or if they show up on Steam or something like that, that means that it's not exclusive to that brand. It's yeah. now of more avail uh, more available. Yes, n- even I, I, like I say, even Nintendo stuff is not not exclusive. It's more first party stuff because I felt like if you put something on Wii U and it came on 3DS, it's on two systems. It's not exclusive anymore regardless of what the graphics may be and everything um i i i feel I, I and i understand i listen because man when ninja theory got enough for xbox i almost fell out my bed like what like that blew everybody up on the internet i mean look at how much uh, sony paid for insomniac i mean that that, that was one of the best oh sh- acquisitions ever and it was cheap it was cheap compared to what i think it's i mean i could have gotten logan this is the sad thing about it sony should have did that a long time ago oh when they should hear, have oh, yes, yeah. yes. when we when we hear it's something that the first thing come out the sony who played that I, I own that ea game that is something that did the shooter one i i can wear i got for ps3 uh, uh oh oh i know what's the name of that game I know you're talking about. I know you're talking about. I can't remember. Yeah, the, the because name they, of it. Ended, they ended up, EA made them end up changing what the game was from mm-hmm. the original trailer that they showed. Wait, Wait was that was well, that well, System Shock? No, no. System Shock is, is uh, it? System Shock is uh, oh, what was the response? No, uh, Insomniac did a game for EA. Um, it was a four player co op shooter. And when they showed the original trailer, it was like a goofy kind of thing that they was having it. But they end up again with EA. Oh, was, oh. Was, it, was it Rocket? Um, God, it just it came starts out. with the R, I think. Uh, yeah, it was. The, it was. The, it's that. It's that dumb Rocket game, right? It's the Rockham. Sh- it's supposed to look like Overwatch. No, no, it it was it no, was no, a, that was that was Cliff Bazinski Studio that you're okay. thinking about. It was it was like a third person action game, almost like Gears of War. Was it Overstrike? Overstrike was oh. the original name, but then they ended up changing it. No, I thought it came out as Overstrike. It may, it may be. I mean, mm. it's still Over Overstrike by EA. Hold by on, I, hold on. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to Insomniac's uh, page. Let's, let's uh, keep, keep talking. I'll find oh. out, and I'll tell you in a second. So, uh, Sunset Overdrive is a fantastic game, but when we think of Insomniac, most of their games that they're known for is Sony, and so everybody literally was just right. waiting. Right. When Sony bought them, it was just like, oh, finally. 
It was Overstrike and it turned it into Fuse. That's it. Yes. 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 Yeah. Fuse came out in 2013 from EA, but it was developed by Insomniac. Yeah. Yes. Because it, it, it turns from something that everybody was really interested in. Then they got fused. And like, what is this basic average game? It literally, it was just average. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, any, any more, any more uh, uh, discussion about this? Because we got a good analysis discussion that I had to ask you guys. Uh, anything else? <laughs> Yeah, I got nothing. Let's let's roll. Let's roll. Okay, so uh, our boss Rush podcast analysis discussion. Uh, do people take part in console war arguments slash discussions because they own one or two games, or sitting on the sidelines hoping they could get a chance to play? Meaning that get a chance to argue and just say stuff. Uh, for uh, you the live bait. in America, people love to just say yeah. things. Oh, for yeah, the sake just, of just, just, yeah, have just, you not just, been just, on Twitter? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, so, just, just talking out their ass for no reason. So, me and Jesse, shout out to Jesse, uh, our wise best cast tonight. He wasn't able to make it, uh, make it. Um, oh, cool. we were talking, we were talking about uh, console, console war arguments, definitely with you know, uh. Series X and PlayStation 5 where everybody was just like, okay, play Sony, you gotta say something. And everybody was just arguing that, you know, Series X is vice versa and Nintendo have no part in this. And it was just like, I want to, I kind of want to know that anyone who are making the console war arguments, because between, back in the day, Nintendo and Sega, yes, that was a console war because yeah. It was Nintendo Sega. We didn't care about Atari. Like if you want, if Who you the want the best, of the, if you want the best of the best, you go into an arcade. But regardless of what you had at sure. home, played on whatever. And this, now the medium and technology has a vest and change. Having these console war arguments and stuff doesn't seem viable, but people want to have them. And it's just like, do you own one or two games? And if you do, yeah. There are, is it the is it the generalization, the Madden and the Call of Duty? Is this just because if you focusing your argument just on those two games, that's not good enough. And regard, I think I've because I say the last of I, not the last of us part two. I say the Last Guardian is one of the PlayStation 4's best game, with Horizon Zero Dawn being second. I think for Xbox, I I literally love Forza Horizon Four with Quantum Break and Ori being the second and third. Um, I can't really say Hellblade because that's for everywhere. For Switch, I think right now it's it's such a it's such crazy that Breath of the Wild is still my number one at this time with Mario Odyssey. But Shoot, then the, Mar- I, the the Mario but, Maker people. Will, will will come for you. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. But then the there's thing, that twelve year old who's like, man, Fortnite really defined this console. <laughs> but the thing about it is, I'm like playing Greece on on uh Switch. I was just like, I may have to rethink some things because Greece is Greece is good. And then like even just this year, like Murder by Numbers is a great game. Uh, Last of Us Part Two is a great game. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a great. Like there's some great games, but people still want to make the argument, and I wonder. From your guys' perspectives, do you think if you're going to have this argument or this discussion, do you a need to have more games, or are you just, or do you think some people are just jumping in to get some attention or stir up some trouble? I, I think if you play the best of that console, so like if we look back at the PS4, right? If you played through God of War, and if you played through, let's say, Ghost Spider-Man, of Tsushima, right? Spider-Man, Spider-Man, yeah. Ghost of Tsushima, if you uh, played those two, three games. You can talk about the legitimacy of that console because those two to three games are showcasing the best of that console. You're seeing the incredible audio and the visuals with God of War. You're seeing the swing mechanic that Insomniac built for Spider-Man. And you're just seeing how great an open world can feel on the PS4 in Ghost of Tsushima. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's different, I think, when you get to like Nintendo because Nintendo, the two or three games... They play fairly similar. Like you have to play a Breath of the Wild, then you have to play the Mario Kart, you have to play Super Smash, then you still have to play like um oh um what's Octopath Traveler. Like play a play an off the chart kind of indie game like like that or with the I think with Microsoft and with Sony, you can get away with two or three games. You can play the Master Chief Collection, you can play Sunset Overdrive, you can play Gears of War Five cover cover the xbox and then you cover the ps5 or ps4 with um with god of war uh ghost of shima and and spider-man 
Uh, uh, go ahead, Laurent. I was gonna say I feel that I feel like you know like okay back when okay back in the old school days when it was when it was Nintendo and Sega and you know then by proxy then it wound up being Nintendo say uh, Nintendo Sony and, uh, and and Microsoft you know I feel like there was a lot of validity between between these console war arguments and stuff like that but you know but now in my opinion I feel like it's just really immature now to think about it because if you just look across the entire spectrum from all from all the companies uh, from all the companies, so Nintendo, Microsoft, Sony, if you look across the spectrum of all the games that come out, there's just great video games everywhere, and it's mm-hmm. always going to it's always going to be one of those situations where where ultimately, like if they can't win the argument based on the games, they'll try to win the argument based on how many units have been sold or how many millions of dollars has been has been raked in by these companies and stuff like that. Uh, Console war arguments, in my opinion, are just people who just want to just like puff out their chest for a second and say, "Hey, I beat this game and it was amazing," you know, uh, you know. And and heaven forbid, it's like exclusive to that to that system. Then you know, it's one of those situations where. When someone comes at me with a with a with a game that's supposed to be exclusive to Xbox, the first thing is like, I have a PC, man. I've already played that game. <laughs> and, and, you know, and basically just deflates that argument. They have to find something new to talk about it to to try and bring their point back across. You know, we can't. You know, like uh, like we, we pretty soon PC gamers. Uh, I mean, PC gamers would be smug enough to tell PlayStation gamers like, Hey, I have a PC. I played that game. <laughs> Right, and, and it's good that you mentioned stats. A lot of people want to use stats to be like, "Well, this system sold this much, okay? This system sold this much, then buy the games are not meeting that system sales." You got almost a hundred some sales, and Horizon only sold ten million around the world. Bloodborne probably did the same thing. There's no way that you have a hundred something and you only did ten percent of that on your system. If people want to argue stats and stuff when it comes yeah. to console thing, just use that as that it's, for example. It's, it's also it's also another weak sauce argument to go on because because mm-hmm. because okay, everybody that owns a PlayStation, everybody that owns an Xbox, everybody yeah. that owns a Switch. They're not playing the same exact games. Like Ed, yeah, I, I know I know about how extensive your library is, and and I barely play the games that you play. But I'm not saying that you have a. I'm not even going to, you know. These argue these people that are, have these arguments turn around and say, "Oh, you got all these games for for Switch. You, you're a trash gamer because they have Monster Hunter and Bayonetta two, and you know, and and The Witcher and stuff like that. You know, like that's another thing that they try to get you with. They try to say, they try to say because of your diversity in games that you're not a true gamer." <laughs> because you're not playing the hardcore titles. You're not playing the Call of Duties every year. You're mm-hmm. not playing the Maddens every year. You're not playing the freaking Halos every, you know, whenever they come out and stuff like that. You're playing all these other games and getting your own enjoyment out of it. That's another, I, I, I just and, feel, I, I always the, feel like I'm the killjoy when I come to these discussion topics no, because I, I immediately just no, nuke everybody's, everybody's. And, <laughs> no, you, you, right. And the funny thing is, is that I play the hardcore games that everybody familiar with, with uh, all the stuff that they don't play. I own the Red Dead, I own the Grand Theft Autos, I own the Gears, I own God of Wars, I own the Halos, just like I own Mario and everything. Monster Hunter, I own. Heck, I be Anthem, and was fine with it. Then most people have be Anthem. I have beat the Division Two. That most people have have it. No, I beat Destiny and Destiny 2. And I have my problems with the first Destiny. I love Destiny 2. Corey could attest to that. I need to play it more. I'm looking for Beyond Light. And so everything that other people... I, heck, I went out and paid my $60 to get Modern Warfare, the new one. And I played that. And I was just like, I give, I give props to Activision and the team who made this. I think Events Warfare is a great game with Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Like I, oh, I yeah. Play, oh yeah. I, like I play a lot of stuff that people have bid up and used Man. for examples. Man, I, I I remember having such a awesome experience with Battlefield Hardline. Oh I yeah. Having an amazing one. Yeah, it was a different it was a different take and I, I enjoyed it. Even though even though I will always have the fondest memories of the Battlefield series when it comes to bad company. Yeah, that's a great one. I, I so mad I never got to experience that that game. I know Battlefield I think it's is it Bad Company too that's like the highest rated? Yeah, it's the highest rated, but uh, but I tell you what, just the just the ad campaign they went on for the first bad company was what got me to mm-hmm. get it. Yeah, oh goodness. Heck shoot, playing Medal of Honor Frontline on the GameCube 
got me into the Medal of Honor series <laughs> and, and stuff like that. So I, my thing with def, I think my thing was yes, I am a big Nintendo fan. I would defend and fight for Nintendo, even though I, the company don't owe me anything because I grew up with Nintendo. Oh, oh no, no, no! I, I, you the, got you got you got dirt on somebody, man, because that <laughs> that that you you talk you talk you, you you talked all that trash about 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 a Zelda game coming, and and two days later there was an announcement for a freaking for the freaking Hyrule game, the high the Hyrulea Kingdom game, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> is this is is this real life right now? <laughs> but who who do you have who do you have dirt on? I'm gonna keep asking you this until you tell me who do you have dirt on over in Nintendo? Okay, because so somebody's in your you okay. got somebody in your pocket right now. So the thing about the Hyrule Warrior thing is is that because Hyrule Warrior sold 800,000 copies, people thought, like, what is this crazy game? I'm not gonna buy this because it's a Warriors game. No one has really touched the Warrior series at all. Call me Tecmo Nintendo does it with Zelda. I'm like, I'm gonna pay my 50 60 dollars and I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna see what it is. The butt rock music, the cutscenes, the story, beating up all of these enemies, and it's so fast paced but so fun that everybody, even on Twitter and Facebook, was just talking about it. So that was a good talk. Now, the they, thing about they, it is they, they did something, they did something different with the really stale idea of the Dynasty Warriors franchise because I mean what what dynasty what, what number are we at on, on Dynasty Warriors? Like 29? I think because <laughs> the last game Dynasty Warriors is, oh my is God. It got the last Dynasty Warriors got so much questionable content. I don't even know who owns it. <laughs> you know. Yes, the Gundam Wing, the Gundam uh Warrior one, I I need to find and play. They said that one was good. Um, and uh, Fist of the North Star one, they did also. Uh, There's a this... Dynasty Warriors game for Fist of the North Star? Yes, there is. See, this this takes me back to being like that 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 13 year old that saw anime for the first time now. Like, oh, I don't need to find this. <laughs> uh, we're getting off topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like I. Uh, okay, so I will admit I have put the 360 down. Like I talked crazy amount of stuff about that system, and that was due to the fact of the red ring. And it was more about the system, never about the games. Uh, so I went with PlayStation 3. But when PlayStation 4 came out, I knocked Sony about that. I'm like, this thing looks like a Kit Kat bar, and it looks like a George Foreman grill that I could throw some meat on. I yeah. don't like the design of the system, but yes. Xbox One looked like the VCR, but the design wise, it looked it sexy. I was going to get both because not only am I a podcaster, because I'm a gamer and I know that there's going to be some experience that Sony could give me that no one else can. Vice versa for Xbox and vice versa for Nintendo. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people don't see that, that these companies give you experiences if you're going to invest into them. Like no, uh, like no, here's no, what no. here's what here's what I'm gonna say. Like you know, like uh, the average the average gamer, the average gamer. When you look at the price of the hardware and stuff like that, the average gamer can only typically go one way. This is why a lot of people like either either pick sides and go with Microsoft, or they pick sides and they go with Sony, uh, or you know, like they pick sides and go with Nintendo. A lot of it drives a lot of it's driven by like what they can do. And what their experiences are, are lying at. This is what I I talk a monumental amount of crap about Nintendo fanboys, but I tell you what, they are loyal to they're loyal to Nintendo. And when when Nintendo says jump, they're gonna ask how high and where do we need to do it, uh, yeah. things like that. Uh, but I think it can also be said about the Xbox the Xbox fanboys and stuff like that. Trust me, like uh, like like. Even though, even though, like uh, Halo Infinite has this re- had this really lukewarm reception, there are Microsoft, there are Microsoft fans that are devoted to it, and they will get it no matter what. Just mm-hmm. like, just like a Sa- Sony fanboy is right now. I want to say that I think Horizon feels like the un- unofficial spokesperson for Sony right now. That's the way mm-hmm. I feel because for the longest time it was Uncharted. Yeah. Uh, and now it looks like, and now it looks like Horizon is a thing, and and just seeing everybody's reactions about how Hori- uh, about the about the new Horizon game, it's just like, oh, that's your system seller. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter if you bring it out and launch, or it doesn't, or, or halfway through the cycle, that's your system seller right there. It, it's going to be curious to me exactly how like so we know uh, Horizon's a trilogy, um, and that's that's at least Aloy's story in Horizon mm-hmm. is a trilogy. So it's like okay, if if Forbidden West ends up coming out, I'm I'm still thinking it's going to launch like March of next year, right? I think that's yeah. a fairly reasonable expectation. How long until the next one? Because you're just pretty. You're, I mean, yes, they they built a whole new map for this one, 
But like, do you wait until the PS6? Whenever that might be, or do you this wait until the end of the PS5? This kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. Uh, and, and I think it was in last week's Boss Rush, our Boss Rush podcast. Um, I was saying earlier that um, that basically we're getting to a point now to where like where like games games flex and they go from one console to the next. Mm-hmm. It, it right. used to be it used to be unheard of. Like usually, like usually, a tr- uh, if it was a trilogy, usually a trilogy started on a console and it ended on that same console. You know, uh, of course, like games like Kingdom Hearts kind of like you know like blew our expectations because because like uh, it took two whole console generations for us to finally get the whole story. No, it did it. It took seventeen thousand games on 3DS and PSP. <laughs> it didn't the nonsense that two was to get to three. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, you know what? I, you know what? Here, 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 here comes the here comes the designated <laughs> at Laron on Twitter. Here we Hit go it. because Hit here, it, here it comes. All right, so Kingdom Hearts was poised to be one of the greatest gaming franchises ever. Like it was a mixture of of Final Fantasy and Disney, and it was an RPG, and it played and it played differently than most of their RPGs that Square that Square Enix had done to date. The problem with the problem was okay. Kingdom Hearts one comes out, phenomenal game. Kingdom Hearts two comes out, really good game. A little bit harder yes. than the original one. A, a little bit harder than the original. And then they're like, we're finishing, the, we're finishing the story on the next series of consoles. So PS3 and Xbox 360. Uh, well, uh, it could have been either way because it sounded like at the time that they were thinking about multi-releasing them on both platforms. Right. But, but you know, uh, and, you know, there a lot of this goes on Square's development. They yeah. Square was trying to Square was trying to get the big push for Final Fantasy 13 and of course Final Fantasy 15 and stuff like that. They had projects going on. Things are uh, things were going out of favor of them, so they started releasing the the, the portable games. Uh, and I remember originally, I can't remember which the first it was one. That I, it was on the Game Boy Advance portable games. They told you that this was not going to be indicative on the story, meaning that what you play in the game is not going to be, you know, is not going to have anything to do majorly with the story. And as more and more handheld consoles, handheld games came out in that franchise, it was like, yeah, this is, you don't have to, you don't have to play the main game to get this, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, when we get to when we start leading up to like I want to say Birth by Sleep. Birth by Sleep was the first game they turn around and said, "Okay, this is part of this is part of storyline. Play this. You need to play this." Okay, uh, three fifty eight over a, two wound up being another is, one. This is the crazy thing. That Game Boy Advance one, they used that as an excuse to lead in part two. I'm like, yes, wait yes. a minute, no. Yeah. This can't yeah. happen. I'm like, you organization thirteen was never talked about in any of the Kingdom Hearts exactly. that I know of. But but like, okay, how much how much does the one bad game in the franchise affect your entire view of the franchise as a whole? Like, I know people who aren't a huge fan of uh, Uncharted Three. Now, granted, mm-hmm. I think all four games are phenomenal, and I think Lost Legacy is probably a, one of the most solid editions ever. But like, when a game has a really bad entry in it, um, uh, Ed, you mentioned Advanced Warfare. I couldn't stand that game. I'm sorry, but like Call of Duty. Is so hit and miss. But when you look at like Call of Duty, for instance, they've had games that just are great, and then like Infinite Warfare sucked. Um, how do you view those those huge franchises when there's really bad ones in the franchise line? Oh, I'll, I'll so, just I'll so, just I'll just, be, just say this before I'll, you go I'll, before you uh, jump in, Leron. Can I answer? Okay, so with Advanced Warfare using an active example, it was the storyline that I okay. liked, mm-hmm. and okay. sometimes the game could be problematic or have its problems but if the storyline is good enough for me to carry through so I could see through because Max Payne 3 should have been is like one of the best stories from the Max Payne series yeah. like I love that game they could do uh, the backstory and past present they could do all of that because that story yeah. flows so good Kingdom Hearts was so confusing what is the fact that they did all the side stuff on the handheld and then connected told to you, the main told stories. You, told you it didn't really matter if you played these or not because it was just all like just stuff that took place in the universe but wasn't like part of the story. And then next thing you know, they start releasing these collections. It's like, oh, they're all part of the story. It's like, excuse me, excuse me, you're telling me I have to go play the music game on on, on the mobile devices? Right. Yeah. You know? You know, uh, and that was the thing that, and that was the thing that kind of like basically ha- had me fall out of love with with Kingdom Hearts. And like I said, you guys can at me on Twitter if you want to have a discussion about this because this is the way I feel about it. Like, like Square's 
Square's hokey pokey with that series is the reason why a lot of people, by the time we got to Kingdom Hearts 3, a lot of people did not really care for it. The game also underperformed because they made bad decisions with that game itself. Right. And Kingdom Hearts 3 was supposed to be running on the Luminous engine that Square Enix themselves created. Mm -hmm. But because that wasn't working, they went to Unreal Engine 4. And then Mm -hmm. the same thing that happened with Final Fantasy 15 is that it was everything that Square Enix was supposed to be doing was supposed to be running on their own engine. So they don't have to pay. uh, Well, um, you got to remember, Final Fantasy 15 was technically a game called Final Fantasy Versus 13. 13, yes. And they had that game all ready to go and have to shelve it and redo everything. And they had it the, because end. they pulled because they pulled development assets from Kingdom Hearts from from the develop from from the Kingdom Hearts three studio to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, but you know, good question about like when it, how uh, does a bad game affect or does a bad game in a franchise affect overall? Yeah. I, I, I my argument to this uh, my argument to this is like man, like look at all those bad Tomb Raider games and Tomb Raider. Is- <laughs> <laughs> yes. Rocking and rolling. Yeah, that's fair. Man. That uh, what, what is it? Uh, what was the one that came on PS2 before they did the reboot? Was it like Angel of Darkness? Because I, I, I like I look at Assassin's Creed as a kind of a perfect example of how you can also redeem your name after a couple of bad games too. Because oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. you look at like uh, what was the uh, American Revolution one? What was that one called? Uh, that's black, that's black, uh, was that Black? No, Black no, Flags the Pirates. Uh, is it Liberation with the girl, or is it Assassin's Creed Three when they were with the it, Asian, Native American? Something like that. You know that game was awful, and <laughs> you know right after <laughs> I. I I'm very blunt. It's just how I am. Sorry. Um, then, you know, Black Flag was a good stepping stone. But then, uh, you know, Ubisoft is like, hey, let's just reset the whole thing and let's build a game that we actually care about. And that was when, you know, we started to get Origins and Odyssey and now we're getting Valhalla. Post, post really, I mean, Black Flag was a great game, but like post Black Flag, I think we've gotten two of the best games so far in the Assassin's Creed series with Origin and Odyssey. And a lot of that is the Mega Man sequelitis thing where every year it comes out and that dilutes the uh, franchise and the excitement for it because the thing about it is sometimes the stuff feels like it's copy and paste and then there's other times it just overall feels cheap. <laughs> I have this I have this course like who gave us this game that nobody asked for? <laughs> <laughs> so uh and and i think some and to even go from there logan i think some people use those like if a game has whether it's good or it's bad they use that for a console uh a console war arguments to be like no this game it, it didn't sell well and it got all these bad reviews so that's why your system suck and my <laughs> system have all of these games and it sold this and they're above 80 with metacritic and the stuff and it's just like what are you talking about i'm like okay so you you're praising god of war do you own god of war nope then then why were you using that as an example? You got a game that you haven't played. Oh no, you mean the po- you mean the posers, the haters. Yes. And, and so it's like, and yes, I'm fine with everybody getting on Nintendo and and talking about their games, talking about their business model, talking about their online. It, it's it, if it feels warranted, it's warranted, and, and everything. I I have my reasons for it, but the, but you cannot deny that Nintendo regardless of what people think of them, they do their best to bring out some good quality stuff. And they try to make things fun. They try to make it where it's not about the console war. It's not about having the biggest and greatest game. It's about you just being able to pick up and play a game and enjoy it. And if you want to talk with friends, let that talk be the marketing for that game. You know, you, you you can have everything in 4K 60 frames per second, but what if that thing has bugs and looking like Assassin's Creed Unity when it first came out? You mean you mean where everybody looked like that ending scene of uh, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Last Ark? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, and it's, and it's just like... It, I think since I think with the console wherever you playing that even with I always still around this but even with PC is that I feel like there's a unity right now and everybody's trying to get to the fact where console wars is not important play wherever you want to play and play it wherever mm-hmm. you can Microsoft mm-hmm. is doing a great job with Game Pass doing it with Game Pass Ultimate they're going to do a fantastic job with Series S for people who who have that and they want to do it definitely with S Cloud because right now. 
Um, when uh, Corey sent me that story about the Apple thing, how they like will let them do streaming, but they got to make an uh, app for each game for it to be reviewed. That's a whole other discussion. But, yeah. you know, being able to allow Steam players to play stuff that Microsoft is going to release. It. If you don't want to play on Windows 10 or, or Xbox, right. you can play Gears of 5 or Gear 6 on Steam. And that's fantastic. If you want to play, if you want to play God, uh, Detroit Become Human and you don't yeah. own PlayStation, Sony made it available on, uh, uh, on, um, Oh, you see, because don't forget that world playing game that uh Sony did that MMO that they had to stop <laughs> making. That was a tragedy. D- Detroit yeah. could be a great game on Twitch too. I've been thinking about that yeah. recently. Yeah, like they, yeah, like uh, I mean, it's not like that was pushing any like crazy graphical bounds or anything. Yeah. Like that's a game, you know, like shoot, bring it out. That'd be a great I, game on Twitch. I, I totally I, play that while I, waiting I, on renders. If I didn't have a PlayStation Four by the time Detroit Become Human came out, that would have been the game that got it. Yep. Got that system for me, uh, but yeah, everybody. Uh, any last thoughts or anything um, uh, about this discussion? Stop being immature. Uh, the, the, the game, uh, console wars. Come on, that's so that's so 2012. <laughs> yes, and like Laurent said, you know, console wars. Yeah, everybody can have it, but the best way to play is on PC. <laughs> exactly, winning. <laughs> but. You also have to have the expensive winning, but you also have to have the expensive uh, graphics card in there. Well, that is never get into PC. Like, I, I just got a new Mac Mini this morning, and I'm like, you know what? I only have to upgrade you like once every five years, maybe. <laughs> I don't, hold, have on, I don't hold on. I don't. I don't go through that. I don't go through that many graphics cards in in, yeah. in that small amount of time. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, this thirty eighty is probably going to be the first time I've thought about upgrading my graphics card in like four years. I am bad. Okay. That's yeah. Good. You already know that I'm going to be like, once you get it, I'm probably going to leave work so I could come home. Be Man, like, stream. I'm going to be straight. I'm going to be streaming all sorts of games. I, you guys are going to think I'm going to have ADD on Twitch because I'm going to be like, ooh, what's this game? Ooh, what's this game? <laughs> you wow. already know my Twitch, my, my Twitch thing is already going to be on point. Look at I, 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 I was playing Monster Hunter last night and my and I was playing off a friend and he was like and he was like uh he was like well, what's your what's your hardware right now? I'm like I'm right I'm running a GTX ten eighty Ti. Uh and he's like and he's like uh do you do you uh did you uh have you been doing any uh any mods for the actual graphics? I was like, No. And he's like, Wow. <laughs> Because I want to see how Destiny looks with that 30, 20, uh, 3080. I want to be like. Uh, I might not be. The, I might not be the player. I might not be the player for that one. But uh, you but have Game Pass. Oh, Destiny how Destiny oh yeah, yeah, I do. I do have it on Game Pass. Uh, I I just installed. Tell me why. So oh, I'll probably have, so, I'll so 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 side thing about Tell Me Why. I need to buy it now because I think it's only three episodes, and I was waiting for everything to drop. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to buy it straight out because I want to see what this whole game is about and does it live up to the hype? You know what? I'll be honest with you. I I I find I really enjoy games like this now. I mean, like, I, of course I played Heavy Rain and of course I played Detroit and of course I played some of the other games that had that same style. But I'm actually I I'm 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 now kicking myself. I'm like, man, why didn't I just play Life is Strange? You know, like why wasn't I why wasn't I playing those games? Like it's it's basically the same vein of game. So, uh, so yeah, so um, I'm probably going to start and tell me why soon. Um, I, I, it might wind up being on Twitch, even though I noticed there's a, there's a big Twitch thing going on right now for tell me why anyway. So like, it's probably like, oh, who's this guy trying to, trying to jump oh, on this bandwagon? Gosh. <sighs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, everybody, that is going to be it for Boss Fresh Podcast. I want to thank Logan and Laron and shout out to Boss Man for producing. Logan, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, Spotify and wherever you get your podcast at Land Party, L A N Party, and then of course Twitter at Logan Corkins. Yes, LeBron, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on social media at, at EXODUS803, X is 803. Um, that's also my Twitch handle as well, and uh, and also my gamer tag. So you can find me in various places like, uh, like PSN, uh, Steam, and Xbox Live. And so that's that's basically it for me. 
I, oh, I oh, think. Logan, Lo, uh, Logan, thank you uh, because um, I've seen some of the previous stuff that you're working on. For so I, I, I got my logos and my and my banners and stuff for my for my Twitch and YouTube channels now. Yes. And uh, and 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 Logan, Logan's been working on his vacation doing some stuff like that. That's why I said I feel like a heel right now because the guy should be relaxing. Right, but good. he was like, no but worries. he was like. Hey, but he was like, "Hey, shoot me this stuff and let me see what I can play with." And man, it's it's freaking amazing. That's pretty cool. Yes, you guys can find cool. me on Twitter at that retro code. You can check out Option Opinion on SoundCloud and other podcast apps. You can check more shows like Crossroads, Nintendo Power Block, One V One, Arsenal X, Watch Fresh Podcast, uh, Recap, which we're going to be coming more episodes going to be recorded, so you guys are going to be able to watch that. Me and my friend are going to be watching uh, No Holds Bar with Hulk Hogan. Uh, <laughs> oh God. That is- going to be an episode mm. uh also me and jesse are going to be trying to watch airplane the movie and i'm going to have to bring Laron back because we finally have to do i'm going to get you sucker yes and i cannot wait to recap that episode and we also got uh, other content uh i posted on my twitch page i mean on my twitter page um some classic content for our pilot and play for Horizon Zero Dawn. So go to our YouTube page, our Boss Rush Games, and check out a lot of our past content also. With that, everybody, have a great week. Have a great weekend. And we will see you next time on Boss Rush Podcast. Bye, everybody. Take care.